Hey Cricketers! Today I'm going to show you how to make this motivational cricket sign. I found this framed chalkboard from Five Below which works as an amazing blank to make signs in home decor with. I didn't see them listed on their website but you can try checking in your local Five Below store. I also found some similar ones on Walmart's website by searching frame chalkboard. This awesome opal holographic glow-in-the-dark vinyl is from TechRap. I'll leave a link down below in my video description where you can find this vinyl as well as all the other materials you'll need to complete this fun Cricut project. I'm going to be using this design that I found from Creative Fabrica. It says, dreams don't work unless you do. If you already have the subscription to Creative Fabrica, all you have to do is click this big green download button. If you don't already have a subscription and you want to download or try them out, you can click the link down below in my video description on YouTube. Um, that will bring you to this page where you can try out a free trial of Creative Fabrica. All of the details are right on this page, so you can sign up for free, download your first 10 items. After the 10th download or one month, the subscription renews at just $9 a month. Their normal cost was $29 a month. I was paying that for a very long time until they came out with these great new deals. If you want an even better deal than $9 a month and you don't want to have to worry about paying every month, you can sign up for their yearly plan, which brings it down to just $4.99 a month. You do have to pay a one-time fee of $59, but it saves you a ton of money. And the best thing about Creative Fabrica that I love is that it comes with a commercial license so that you can sell your crafts legally without the fear of getting sued for using designs that you shouldn't be selling. And if for some reason you want to cancel, you can cancel anytime, no questions asked. So after you sign up for that free trial, you can go back over to this page and click that big green download button. A zip file should open up. Sometimes it's on the upper right hand corner, sometimes it's in the bottom left hand corner. If you can't find this on your computer, go to your start menu and look in the downloads folder. Once you open the zip file, you'll see a couple different types of files. There's an AutoCAD, PostScript, PDF, PNG, or HTML. I usually like to download the SVG, but if that's not available, the next best thing is a PNG or JPEG. So I'm going to click this PNG file, right click, and click Save As. Save this file on your computer wherever you want. Just don't forget where you saved it because you need to re-upload it in Design Space. Once you're in Cricut Design Space, you want to click this Upload button near the bottom left. Then click Upload Image, Browse, select the file, and click Open. Now you have the choice to select one of these three options. I'm going to click Simple, the one at the top, and then Continue. This is where you need to remove the background. It's already done, that's why you can see this checkered pattern. So all we have to do is click Apply and Continue. Now you have two choices, a cut image or a print then cut image. If you select print then cut, then that means you're printing out on your printer and then having your Cricut cut it. That's not what we're doing in this tutorial. You wanna click the cut image because we're cutting out this design onto a sheet of vinyl. So select cut image and then upload. Now select the file, it's always on the left for the most recent and click add to canvas. Many times once you upload a design into design space, it automatically uploads huge. You need to shrink the design down so that you can work with it. So in the corner, you'll see this box in a double arrow, click that and then drag it. And you might need to move it over and do that a few times to shrink it down. Now that it's smaller and workable, we need to figure out what size we have to make the design. So you need to go grab a ruler and your blank and measure your blank so you can figure out how big to make this design. Always make sure you grab a ruler and measure your blank before you cut the vinyl. You might be tempted to just look at this and see that it says 12 by 15 and assume that it's 12 by 15. But if you grab your ruler, it's the whole frame that's 12 inches and not the black part that we're working on. I don't want my picture to be touching the side, so I wanna move it over a little bit so I have some space in between each side. So I want it to be about nine inches 
by slide this down about an inch from the top and give myself about an inch at the bottom. So around nine by 11 and a half. The widest that I can make this design is nine and a half inches. So what I can do is go up here and click 9.5 and enter. This should be the perfect size for my frame. Now all I have to do is go over and click make it. When I'm at this screen, this is when I like to go and cut out my vinyl. You have the option to mirror or not mirror your image that makes your image flip around. You only need to mirror your image when you're working with a heat transfer vinyl. Since I'm not working with a heat transfer vinyl, I'm not going to mirror my image. At this point in the process, I like to cut out my vinyl. I like how I can see on the mat right here how much vinyl I need. I need just under 10 and a half inches. I always go a little bit further so that I don't mess up and cut off the tiniest bit of my design. I've had that happen, so I think it's better to cut that extra quarter inch and give yourself enough space so you don't have to mess up and redo the whole project. So even though I could probably get away with 10 and a quarter, I'm just gonna cut out 10 and a half inches. This vinyl looks so cool. Grab your Cricut trimmer and pull out this little slide away piece. I'm so surprised to hear how many people didn't know this existed. Take the end and slide it through the trimmer. And we're gonna line it up with about 10 and a half, a little hair less. Make sure it's flat against this side, close it and cut. Grab your standard grip mat and peel off the protective covering. You want to take this vinyl and place it in the upper left hand corner of your Cricut mat. One thing that's important to know about this kind of vinyl is that it has a protective layer on it. It says remove the protective layer right here. So it's actually a tiny, tiny film that you have to peel off. This is the only kind of vinyl that I've ever seen have this protective film. Usually if you're working with a permanent vinyl like Oracle 651, you won't have to do this part. Now we can go back to design space. Then click continue in the bottom right hand corner. Now I need to select the material that I'm using. In the past, I've cut this vinyl out using the vinyl setting and it has worked really well. I would also recommend changing the pressure to more. Now we can move over to our Cricut machine and load our mat into the machine. Make sure this is plugged into the back of your Cricut machine and then plug the other end into the wall. Open up your Cricut, turn it on, and you wanna make sure that there's nothing behind the machine. So I'm gonna move my Cricut Joy and my flowers out of the way because you don't want your mat to be hitting anything behind the machine. The next step is loading the mat into the Cricut machine. So you can see right now the double arrow is blinking. That's because our machine is waiting for us to load it. So carefully slide it under these two little tabs and then click the blinking double arrow. The Cricut pulls the mat in a tiny bit and then the C will begin to blink and then we can click that. Now the machine will start cutting. If you want to keep track of your progress, you can go back over to Design Space and it will show you the progress. The Cricut Maker cuts pretty fast. It should be done in about two minutes. My machine just finished cutting, so I'm gonna click the blinking double arrow again to unload the mat. And now it's time to weed our project. I have a lot of empty space on this side and I wanna save this excess vinyl so that I can reuse it for other projects. That amount of vinyl would be perfect to reuse on cups or mugs. So I'm just gonna carefully peel this off. 
and then use my scissors to cut this out. So this will go in my save scraps. Then you can grab your weeding tool and I always start in the upper left hand corner. And just carefully pull away the vinyl until you're left with the design that you do want. Make sure that none of these pieces are coming up that you want to keep. I really love this tech wrap vinyl. Not only is it beautiful, it's really easy to work with. Now I'm gonna grab my chalkboard and open it up and I just wanna place the vinyl on top of the blackboard so I can make sure that it fits well before I transfer it over. I'm sure it will fit and look perfect, but I just wanna see it with my own eyes. Comes with some extra chalk, which I won't be using, but I'll give it to my kids and we don't really need this either. So that is pretty much what our sign will look like. So I'm going to put this back onto my mat and grab some transfer tape. I'm going to be using transfer tape by Tech Wrap. I really like their transfer tape. So just grab your transfer tape and put it over your design and then I'm going to cut out a piece. I like how this transfer tape has grid lines too because it makes it easy to be accurate. You want to carefully peel away the paper backing. Then I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Then you can grab your squeegee tool or your scraper, whatever you want to call it. Smooth it down nice and flat. Normally, I would recommend cleaning your blank with isopropyl alcohol and a coffee filter. Um, since this is a chalkboard, I'm worried that the alcohol might take the chalkboard paint off. And I just unwrapped it, so it's brand new and not dirty. So I'm going to skip the cleaning step. If it was something like a wine glass that you were making, I would definitely clean the surface. But with this, it'll be fine. It's not getting washed or touched. It just has to stick and get hung on the wall. So grab your transfer tape and pull it up and now your design should be sticking nicely to the tape. Now we can move this aside, put our frame front and center. Before you apply your vinyl, you want to flip your frame upside down and pay attention to where the hooks are so that you don't put your design on backwards. If you did put it on backwards, you can always undo these little tabs and flip the backing around. But if you want to do it right the first time, just pay attention to where these are, flip it over, and then add your vinyl. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way down and up. After you've smoothed everything down flat, you can carefully peel away the transfer tape. I always fold it flat back towards myself and then peel away. So I'm not pulling it up like this, I'm pulling it back towards myself.
And this is what the finished product looks like. I think this holographic vinyl looks so awesome against this black background. Now you have this giant sheet of transfer tape. If you didn't already know, transfer tape is reusable. You can reuse this piece over and over again until it gets too crinkled and ripped up to use. So what I like to do is stick these to one of my old Cricut mats that is all dirty and has pretty much lost its stickiness. That's where I store all of my transfer tape scraps. I store all of my old mats on the wall, so I'll just stick this right to it. In my next video, I'm going to show you how I made vision boards out of old Cricut mats. Vision boards are helpful because they serve as a visual representation of our goals, dreams, and aspirations. This Cricut project gives you a fun way to reuse those old mats and help remind you what you are working so hard for. Make sure you have your notification bell turned on so you don't miss out on my upcoming videos. I would also love if you liked this video and subscribed to my channel because it really helps my small business goal and gets me one step closer to reaching my goals. Thanks for watching my videos and I'll see you in the next one.